And welcome to the program. The European Parliament overwhelmingly approved a 1 billion euros in additional financial assistance to Ukraine. But as a precondition for the loan, the EU requires the country to make more progress in its fight against corruption, as well as some other conditions. To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Olena Bilan. She's an editor at Vox Ukraine. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Hello. So let's talk just in general first about this loan. What was the uh, European Parliament's idea behind the money and what were they looking at, the reason why Ukraine needs it? Oh, this is not the first loan that the EU is providing to Ukraine. This is like uh, the fourth. This is the fourth one. Right. Uh, and this is, um, so this, is uh, this approval of the loan was in the framework of, U of EU's overall policy with the neighboring countries like Ukraine. Um, so this is called macro financial assistance. It's provided to uh, to the countries um, which are in need, uh, like which have uh, balance of payments uh, needs uh, or budget or run budget deficits and need need to some financing, cheap financing actually to cover part of the budget deficit or to deal with external uh, repayments. And um, Ukraine is exactly in a situation like this, so that there are big repayments uh, coming soon. And because this isn't the first loan. I mean, U Ukraine also has loans from other organizations that they're going to need to re repay. Right. So Ukraine has to repay about six billion US dollars over the next year and a half, and this is only from the state budget. There are more repayments from the central bank reserves, but we are looking uh, exactly at the state budget because it's uh, the the government doesn't have many. Uh, sources of uh, of uh, dollar financing. So when this six billion is quite sizable amount, and definitely uh, the government needs to raise new money to refinance uh, these uh, repayments. And the EU provides uh, quite cheap and long-term financing. It will be impossible for Ukraine to uh, to borrow at its same terms elsewhere. Um, so the IMF uh, also provides financing, but right. the IMF money is disbursed to central bank uh, reserve. So it's a little bit, it's also uh, of, of a big help for the country, but it doesn't help the budget directly. And so as you were saying that this, that Ukraine would not find a way to get a, such a cheap loan, but this is not necessarily a cheap loan as in with the conditions that come with it. Uh, and I, I know that um, I have a quote from the rapporteur uh, Yaroslav Valesa. And, and we can talk about some of the points he makes, but let's listen to it now. The purpose of this aid is to make the country more economically stable, and there are firm conditions in place to ensure that the money will serve this goal. The country also has to take drastic measures to address corruption before the funds are delivered. I welcome with great satisfaction last week's adoption of the law on the High Anti-Corruption Court in Ukraine. It means that Ukrainians take their commitment seriously. Okay, so let's talk about this very big point that comes up. The funds will not be dispersed until there's been made some drastic steps on corruption. So what are you reading into this? What's your take on this? Well, I, I really think it's a very positive development and uh, there's a big uh, progress on the side of the European Union in terms of structuring the conditionality of the MFA program because the previous programs were disbursed uh, and of um, so there were also conditionality but it was not very specific in some areas and it was quite broad based so um, and money and, and also was used often dispersed and then there was the suspension or cancellation or right. deeply concerned wording. Uh, it, it, but it was possible, it's still possible that this money will not uh, will not arrive. So that right. the, the EU has a right to, to stop the program or to suspend it till the conditions are met. So, but it's very good that uh, there is a clear and of clear message from the EU what exactly needs to be done. Um, so definitely the, the sides, the Ukrainian side, Ukrainian government and the European Commission, they will still negotiate on the exact deadlines and the kind of um, on, and the list of exact list of conditions. But it is clear from the messages already that creation of the anti-corruption court, so basically implementation of the law which was approved um, some time ago. Uh, will be one of the critical conditions. And this is very good because it means that the West has some uh, some kind of 
clear kind of strategy towards uh, towards Ukraine. And, and the line, law was signed this week, but uh, there seemed to be from some points uh, some concerns that it meets all the requirements uh, or the recommendations of the Venice Commission. Um, what are you hearing about what about the anti-corruption law and if this is enough that meets what the European Union is looking for? Well, they are, uh, indeed, this was um, quite a surprising kind of news that the law um, uh, contains some clause that actually doesn't um, allow an appealing uh, uh, to anti-corruption court. So basically, all the appeal process on, on the on the kind of investigations that are currently um, in progress, they will be um, uh, in the framework of a general court system. Mm -hmm. So they will not be. Right, it's, it's, it's this kind of loophole engaged. for the current ones, right? Yeah, yeah. And and where or have you heard that there's a? Is this one maybe one of the conditions that the EU may put on here is to rework this law or or well, in I the think implementation? That's basically, it will be the IMF who will be requiring uh, correction of this of this clause. Uh, so the IMF still has to make an assessment of this of the law, and they didn't uh, they didn't uh, make any public statements. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they think, are kind of um, carefully looking into the document. So and the, well, the adoption of the law, com consistent with the IMF program and with Ukraine's commitments, is still a, um, a requirement for the next loan tranche. Mm -hmm. And without the IMF tranche, the EU money will not come. Absolutely right. There it and so there's that thought that the uh, IMF tranche would be perhaps released in the fall. So do you see there may be some correlation to, as you're saying, maybe the EU is going to wait to see what the IMF decision is? Yeah, it's for sure, it's for sure. The EU will not make any movements without the IMF. So the IMF tranche should come first and then the EU will be able to disburse, but uh, after Ukraine meets other requirements which will be within this uh, macrofinancial assistance. So also there is a kind of a bureaucratic process that makes um, it's, uh, I think, uh, the earliest possible date of, uh, of EU loan disbursement is the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, because actually uh, the memorandum, the Ukraine and the EU have to sign the memorandum of understanding where there will be the list of um, conditions and, um, and other terms of the, of the loan agreement. Then this memorandum will need to be uh, ratified by the Ukrainian parliament. So, th so there so is it will take several months at least. But at least there's a known, uh, uh, some ideas already of in general what some of the preconditions are. Now, and I have, there are other precondi preconditions set, not just with anti-corruption. Now, I have a, a list here that we can look at okay. as we go over. Um, but um, in the list, there's, uh, it talks in addition to the anti-corruption, we have several to do with respecting the basics of the democratic process, uh, that's the rules, the, dealing with the rules of rule of law, free and fair elections, but then there's creating jobs and, and ending poverty. So is this too much? Is this too broad? Or, 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 or what are your, or is this all a reasonable request or an expectation? I mean, Ukraine isn't starting from scratch, but how realistic is it having so many preconditions on this loan? Well, I think this is, uh, we should treat it as a general framework. So basically, no, not really the list of exact conditions, but uh, this is the uh, aim uh, of the of the of this macrofinancial assistance is to promote the uh, democracy and also to uh, promote economic growth and to definitely to reduce um, uh, unemployment, which is very uh, very interrelated things. Correct. So, yeah. but um, and I think that actually the effective uh, fight against corruption. Uh, well, it's, it's within the framework. It, it, it will move Ukraine towards its uh, goals and there Absolutely. is no contradiction. So, but um, yeah, it, I, 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 I think there is nothing we can, we can object <laughs> in well, this respect. Well, if someone's giving you a, a billion euros, they're obviously going to have preconditions for it. And so Ukraine, uh, it's written that the, it says that Ukraine, or IMF, identify that Ukraine has a whole of about three to four billion um, euros for its 2018-2019 budget. And you were saying that this may not be quite correct? 
So I understand. Well, I think it's uh, uh, the, the number that, that you're referring is not really the budget gap. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, it's uh, additional external financing requirement. Right. R yes. Yeah. So this is this was an estimate of about I think four to five billion dollars. So uh, a little bit less in in euros, but. Uh, yeah, this is the money that Ukraine needs to um, to have its uh, kind of in foreign currency inflows and outflows balanced uh, mm -hmm. over the next two years. But when we look at the public finance, the station is um, uh, is more difficult, I would say. Uh, and the reason is that uh, this external debt repayment that Ukraine needs to be in the IMF program to be able to uh, get financing from the external markets, because you know the situation in the external markets have deteriorated uh, uh, sharply over past uh, months. Uh, so there is a, there is a decline in prices uh, of uh, emerging market assets. Uh, so across all across, across many countries, including Ukraine, and now Ukraine's euro bonds uh, trade uh, uh, um, at at, um, at a yield of about uh, ab above eight percent already, um, closer to nine actually. So and uh, it will be very very difficult, and uh, I would say now impossible for Ukraine to raise any financing uh, from the eurobond market without a clear uh, signal that the IMF program is on track, that the money from the IMF is coming. Okay. Thank you so much for giving us some more insight in this, and we'll make sure to have you back here to uh, give us any updates, and once we see some things happening, so that you can tell us more. Sure. Always welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And that was Olina Biland, an editor at Vox Ukraine. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned with us for more.